Magandang umaga, Malacanang Press Corps, BFA Press Corps. Welcome to our second press briefing this week where we will be discussing the uh, Switzerland trip for the World Economic Forum in Davos next week. Nagkaroon ng briefing ang Department of Foreign Affairs kanina kay Pangulong Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr. kung saan pinangunahan na ni Secretary Enrique Manalo ang presentasyon uh, at ito ay sumentro sa mga importanteng meetings lalo na sa new systems for investment, trade, and infrastructure. In attendance this morning to present the programs and lineup for the WEF forum uh, were Department of Trade and Industry Secretary Alfredo Pascual, Department of Finance Secretary Benjamin Diokno, and Department of Migrant Workers Secretary Susan Ople, and of course our Presidential Communications Office Secretary Cheloy Velicaria Garafil. Uh, at para maging um, comprehensive ang discussion natin mamaya, uh, kasama rin natin, of course, uh, our uh, DFA Undersecretary Carlos Soreta and US USEC for Multilateral Affairs and International Economic Relations and, uh, of course, ASEC Eric Tamayo. But before I call on them, let me uh, share a little bit about what the uh, World Economic Forum is all about. The theme for this year is the cooperation in a fragmented world. And um, here, uh, we will be able to explore new systems for investment, trade, and infrastructure amidst the economic downturn. That's the first theme. Second one is cooperation in our multipolar world amidst geopolitical risks. Number three is energy, climate, and nature amidst energy and food crisis. Four is partnerships with the private sector on innovation and resilience amidst current industry headwinds. And five, work, skills, and care amidst social vulnerabilities. We are presented with an opportunity to forward our priorities on food and energy security, digital, digitalization, climate action, attracting investments and promoting beneficial trade, addressing inequality and providing, and providing, I'm sorry, accessible social services. And to partner with other countries, businesses, civil society and other stakeholders to this end, as well as to collaborate with the World Economic Forum on several of their initiatives. So let me call on um, Yusek Carlos Soreta to please uh, uh, give us a briefing on the program. Good morning, thank you very much, Ms. Daphne, and uh, good morning, uh, Palace and DFA Press Corps. We're very glad to come here to face you fresh from uh, briefing the, the president on his trip to attend the uh, annual meeting of the World Economic Forum in Davos. Uh, the World Economic Forum remains the uh, premier forum for world and business leaders to, I'm sorry, to get together, to interact, and to address, uh, come up with ideas and plans to address the many challenges and opportunities uh, facing our uh, global economy. Um, the president goes to Davos at a time when our country and our region is uh, recovering uh, well from um, past challenges where um, um, projections uh, remain high for economic growth in our country and our region. And uh, we have a realization in, in our region that uh, individual and collective, uh, our uh, individual and collective uh, economic potential remains, remains great, and there's a lot of hope and optimism. So it's, it's a good time for our country and um, representing our country and our region to be in Davos at this time. The president will be the only leader from ASEAN to be in Davos, and he will be only one of two leaders from Asia. So he will be in a wonderful position to uh, represent not only our country, but how our own region ASEAN and the East Asia region can be the uh, engine of growth for, for the world economy. Um, we help, so the, the theme for WEF is uh, cooperation in a fragmented world. What we want to present is that the Philippines in, in ASEAN and in Asia can, can be uh, important factors in bringing together the fragmented parts of the world. What, what we present to a fragmented world because of our great economic potential in our country and our region is the, that the, we, it's a promise of progress and prosperity 
um, is what we offer if we are able to achieve peace in other parts of the world. If the causes of the fragmentation can be addressed, we can promise that once peace is achieved, there will be progress and prosperity. So that's what we offer the world um, as an incentive for uh, the, the causes of fragmentation, meaning the, uh, without needing to get into specifics, uh, conflicts uh, to, uh, to be resolved. We, a little more detail, so the president will be leading a, uh, a, uh, um, our economic team composed of government officials and uh, business leaders, and we will present the country's economic performance, which tops growth in the region before an audience of international CEOs. The president will also participate in a high-level dialogue session with the president, with other leaders, the president of South Africa, prime minister of Belgium, president of the European Commission, and of course the uh, prime minister of uh, a few more others who have still to confirm um, who if they will be participating. Um, there will be a stakeholder dialogue on uh, nutrition, global nutrition, something very important to us. Uh, food security, of course, very important, but nutrition is also very important. There are parts of the world where food is available, but uh, children are not properly nourished. It's so there's more to food security than just having a food. The, the quality uh, is very important, um, especially for, for children. So nutrition should always go hand in hand with, uh, with uh, the food security. And the president is uh, scheduled to, to d discuss this issue with other world leaders. He will also have a number of activities on the sidelines, including uh, business meetings, as well as meeting with the Philippine community, Filipino community, not only from Switzerland. I understand that uh, other uh, Filipino community members from other parts of Europe have um, asked to attend and of course they will be allowed to attend so they will be coming in uh, from other countries in Europe to, to meet the president. Um, we're at uh, 700 now, 700 Eric, uh, we are about, uh, have registered and uh, increasing. We hope to accommodate all of them. Through the president's participation we'll be able to push for our priorities in food and nutrition and energy security and as discussed by, by Ms. Daphne. At the Briefing uh, this morning, the president said that uh, you know we have developing all these excellent fundamentals, and uh, there's much that we can offer investors. And he said, you know, let's let's talk about the sovereign wealth fund um, that that's uh, being set up. Uh, and I, I I agree completely, the president. The World Economic Forum is a uh, great venue to do a sort of soft launch for our sovereign wealth fund given the prominence uh, of uh, the forum itself and uh, global and business leaders who will be there. Um, and they will hear it directly from the president, uh, what uh, the fundamentals that we have and um, that lead us to decide that we should have a sovereign wealth fund, sovereign wealth fund. So that's one of the things uh, we're preparing for um, in, um, for, for Davos. I think uh, that's basically it. Uh, um, do we take questions or can, can I go home now? <laughs> questions? Thank you very much. Uh, Ace Romero, field star. Uh, good morning, Yusek. So how will the president tackle the Maharlika given that it has not yet secured uh, final approval from it's a yeah. Congress. Thank you, Mr. Roy. It's really more a, a soft launch. It's uh, it's uh, to introduce it. Uh, I, I understand it is evolving. We have the fullest respect for the congressional process and the open hearings that they're having and how to the work out the details. But the broad strokes of it, the president has a very very good grasp of what he wants to achieve, uh, whatever form the sovereign wealth fund uh, finally takes. Uh, what's very important is it's an investment in the future and uh, there's great confidence the president has in the ab ability and capabilities of Filipinos, Filipino entrepreneurs and um, local investors even. So he's, so it's a very soft launch. It's not a, so don't say that he's launching Southern Wealth Fund in, 
in Davos. You know, it's, people do this all the time in for, fora like this. Um, in my past attendance in WEF, there have been launches. I remember Bill Gates uh, launched some initiatives on, in Africa yeah, in a soft way. It's more to inform the world. And it's really one of the best places to do it. And I have to say, it's the president's idea. I'm, I regret I didn't even think about it. Uh, he, he, he I just want to also uh, uh, add to that, that at the meeting, the president had um, reminded all of us that World Economic Forum is an economic forum. So it's the time for the Philippines to, um, since we're at the world stage, to let them know what our country is doing um, in terms of being um, ready and attractive for investments. And that's what um, was discussed this morning. Questions? Pia Gutierrez, ABS event. Sir, uh, will there also be a chance for the president to hold bilateral meetings with heads of state that will, who will be attending the forum? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, he will be interacting in many of the events, um, panels with uh, global leaders. Uh, I'm sure there'll be downtime. You, you have to understand, WEF is a, it's a, there's 270 events squeezed into five days. Um, some very specific, uh, sectoral events and so one-on-one -on -one bilaterals might be difficult because it's hard to because all the leaders are either leading opening uh, sessions or are panelists the opportunity for bilaterals will be when he's uh, there uh, sitting beside for example the president of Bel prime minister of belgium or the president of korea so but a typical sit down it's not that kind of meeting it's not like APEC or ASEAN. It's, it's a different dynamic altogether. Um, it's, re it's really a bit different. So the bilaterals will be mostly when uh, they're in the same room together. And we have, and he has expressed interest. He is, he is a very focused person. He has said, I want to talk to this guy about this. I can't mention this, but I will, when I bump into him, I'm gonna tell him this. You know. And uh, we're preparing all the, the talking points, not just with the global uh, leaders, but also, uh, heads of financial institutions that he wants to meet. So yes, there will be talks. Um, I wouldn't characterize it in terms of the bilateral that we're used to, like in ASEAN or APEC, where they sit down in a room across the table. It's a bit different. Thank you. OK, Michelle Gilang, Daily Trigger. Uh, good afternoon, Po Yusek Sareta. Uh, in November last year, the president, during a media interview on the sidelines of, I believe it, it was ASEAN, the president said he was kind of ambivalent about going to Switzerland because his existing <coughs> schedule is already filled with several foreign trips. Uh, I just want to ask, was there any adjustments made to the, uh, to the schedule of the president to make room for the World Economic Forum? There were no other engagements of the president that was compromised by his attendance. It's, uh, the yeah, there's no, no, I think that's the question, that if there were some adjustments to be made. No, there's a, uh, it, it's a good time to go to, to Switzerland and attend the web. Uh, there's no other thing planned for this window. I know it's a long trip, he'll be away for five days. Uh, so we had to block that off and um, no, no, no there are other trips for this month, like China, and then there's one coming up in a few weeks. Which, no, there was no. Good question. Any other questions? No more? Oh, Ace Rivero again. Under Secretary, just a follow up on the Maharlika. So, what particular aspects of the Sovereign Wealth Fund will be tackled by the President during the forum? My understanding is it will be broad strokes. Like I said, this we have to leave the specifics to the legislation, which I'm, I've seen some drafts of. It's really very, very specific. We're working with the Department of Finance uh, and the Department of Trade to come up with very precise, targeted messages for the president. Um, again, in terms of broad strokes, for we're not handing out brochures yet or <laughs> <laughs> packets for invest. No, it's not. It's it's going for the president himself. Uh, bringing to the world the idea that we will be having, having this. So it's not, it's not that uh, 
but basically it's relaying to the world that we're ready to have such a wealth fund. Why we are doing it and why it's a good idea, yes. Uh, Thank you, Yusuf. Okay, Eden Santos, Net25. Uh, sir, hindi po ba nangangamba ang BBM administration na baka biglang mabuhay ulit yung issue ng uh, Swiss account ng Pamilya Marcos pag, sa pagbisita po niya dito sa Switzerland? Uh, maraming salamat. Hindi naman po siguro. Meron po tayong um, malino na framework for legal cooperation with Switzerland. Uh, Nag-negotiate po tayo ng mga agreements for cooperation on legal matters on uh, including even extradition, yung mga matters that may relate to this issue that you are referring to. And none of those mechanisms have been triggered by the Swiss government or anything. So we don't know, that we don't expect anything. Uh, I don't think it's an issue. Uh, so haka-haka lang for fake news yung mga uh, uh, sinasabi na baka mag-withdraw ng account ng Pangulo sa Switzerland. It's hard to comment on, on uh, that. Thank you, Pop. If okay. ever there was something like that, we would know about it, but there's none. Uh, like I said, the uh, bilateral relations with Switzerland is excellent. Um, there's a legal framework for cooperation on, on financial matters, and none of it has been uh, triggered. Okay, uh, last question. Daniel Manalastas, PTV. Hi, sir, good morning. Sir, uh, do you have a rough estimate or siguro uh, tansya nyo lang kung ano yung investment na, ano-ano yung mga investment na iuwi po ng Pangulo? Usually we do that at the end of uh, the, the trip. Hard to speculate. Uh, baka mabulilyasan yung baka matras. You know, it's not. But our practice has been it's, it's at the end uh, of the trip. But this one is not uh, so much uh, it again like I said it's a different kind of uh, mm -hmm. uh, visit. Um, I'm sure we will be able to quantify to some extent, uh, but that will come at the end. Thank you. Okay. okay. Sir, um, are, we, are we okay to uh, accommodate at least uh, one question? Yeah, sure. Pia. Yeah. I mean. Sir, um, this is not connected to the trip, but I just want to ask for the comment of the DFA on the statement of the re Ukrainian Sergei Defair uh, that they have been. Um, um, asking the DFA for a phone call between uh, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky and uh, President uh, Fernando Marcos Jr. since June 2022, since th the president has been elected, but it has yet to be accommodated. Th could, can you comment on this, sir? First of all, we don't really appreciate when these things are done. Uh, Ukraine is a, is, a, is a country we have a good relationship with, but when Matters like these are vented by uh, representatives of uh, another government through the press. It's not something that we, we appreciate. And I think I'll limit my, my comment. We, if, he if he wants this to happen, he has to, uh, we have to discuss it. Uh, these things are arranged, the uh, talking points are discussed, there's pre-discussion. Um, it's not good diplomatic practice to uh, be doing it the way, the way he did. I, I think I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Okay, uh, our last question will be from our DFA reporter, Joseph Pedrajas. What is expected to be achieved during PBBM's trip, like investments, lobbying national concerns? I'm sorry, I'm, I didn't, the last part. Uh, like investments and lobbying national concerns. Lobbying, oh, yes, um, I think Ms. Daphne pretty much covered it. Yes, he will be meeting uh, global leaders and global economic leaders, and he will be engaging them uh, discussing how to bring together a fragmented world. It's really a, a, a complex issue that's facing the leaders in WEP. Uh, there are opportunities to, uh, you see there's a broader agenda in WEP. You're mm -hmm. trying to solve global problems and promote global growth. But of course we, we have our own agenda also to promote the Philippines and he will be, be doing that. And like I said, uh, the assessment probably should come uh, after the the visit, but the WEF is really designed for global leaders to get together, to tackle together in a cooperative way uh, global issues. But, you know, doesn't mean we shouldn't promote our own interests, which we will. Thank you. Oh. Okay, thank you, Yusek. Ms. Daphne? Okay, I think uh, we've, uh, we thank you so much for being here, and thank you for all the questions, and thank you, Yusek Carlos Soreta and uh, ASEC Eric Tamayo. 
Um, maraming salamat, Malakanyang Press Corps at uh, DFA Press Corps. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. Now you can Thank have you. your lunch. Oh, yes. <laughs>